Today, we're discussing the article titled The Impact of Initialization on LoRa Fine-Tuning Dynamics. So, this article dives into how deep learning has shifted towards a pre-trained fine-tune approach, which is quite different from the traditional method of training models from scratch. It's all about using pre-trained models and fine-tuning them for specific tasks, which can save a lot of time and resources. To kick things off, could you tell us more about the main problem under study and what contributions this paper makes? Sure thing. The paper addresses the challenge of adapting large-scale models efficiently without full fine-tuning, which is often resource-intensive. It introduces low-rank adaptation, or LoRa, as a solution that uses low-rank matrices to reduce trainable parameters. The paper also highlights various LoRa variations and stresses the importance of initialization schemes in enhancing LoRa's performance. All right, let's move on to the setup and definitions. Can you explain the general neural network model and how LoRa fits into it? Oh, absolutely. The section describes a neural network model with input X, network depth L, and hidden weights WL. LoRa is used to fine-tune this model by constraining weight updates with low-rank decomposition. Only certain matrices are trainable while others remain frozen, and as the network width grows, proper scaling rules are needed to prevent instabilities. Interesting. Now regarding the initialization of LoRa adapters, what are the proposed schemes and their impact on training dynamics? Well, there are two schemes, INA and INIT-B. Init A sets Zikas B sort to zero and two in that amount of one, while init Z B is carried to the R minus one and Z two to zero. These schemes lead to different dynamics, especially when the model width is large. Got it. And what about the features of LoRa? How are they defined during fine tuning? Right. LoRa features are defined for each architecture and layer. During fine tuning, these features and weights are denoted with specific notations to track changes over time. Let's explore the dynamics of LoRa fine-tuning as model width increases. What does the analysis reveal? The analysis shows that as model width grows, LoRa fine-tuning dynamics change significantly. The study focuses on LAMA models, assuming fixed LoRa rank much smaller than model width, allowing intuitive derivations. Okay, so in the simplified setting, how does the single data point approach help in understanding fine-tuning dynamics? Oh, that's a good question. By focusing on a single data point, the study isolates individual lower layer contributions, simplifying the analysis while still extending results to many batched gradients. And what about stability and feature learning? What conditions are necessary for stable feature learning? Well, stability requires scaling hyperparameters like initialization and learning rate with model width. Certain terms might become trivial or unstable, so conditions ensuring stable feature learning are crucial. Now about the gamma operator, how does it help in tracking asymptotic behavior in neural networks? Oh, the gamma operator is quite handy. It captures polynomial dependencies of variables with respect to model width, helping understand scaling of preactivations, gradients, and weight updates. And how do recursive formulas derived using the gamma operator characterize fine-tuning dynamics? Right. These formulas describe how gradients and weights evolve during fine-tuning, assuming process gradients are theta of 1. They provide insights into changes based on initialization schemes. Comparing init A and init B, what are the differences in terms of stability and feature learning efficiency? Well, init A allows larger learning rates, leading to better feature learning, but with some instability. Init B offers stability, but limits feature learning due to undertraining. And what did the experiments with a teacher-student model reveal about these initialization schemes? Oh, the experiments showed that init A supports larger learning rates and efficient feature learning, though with some instability. Init B maintains stability, but limits learning efficiency. Moving on to language model experiments, how do these findings validate the theoretical predictions? The experiments confirm that init generally leads to more efficient feature learning supported by real-world task evidence. This aligns well with the theoretical predictions. Regarding glue tasks with Roberta, what were the key observations about different initialization schemes? Well, init A led to better performance and larger optimal learning rates compared to init B. For MNLI, there was a significant test accuracy difference, while for QNLI, the optimal learning rate was similar. And how about the LAMA experiments? 
did they show similar trends? Yes, indeed, and it resulted in larger optimal learning rates and lower test perplexity. For LAMA 7B on FLAN V2, MLU accuracy was slightly higher with init A. Jensen, what's your overall take from these experiments and findings? I think it's noteworthy how the choice of initialization scheme can significantly impact learning efficiency and stability. The experiments clearly demonstrate the trade-offs between init and init B, providing valuable insights for practitioners. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Until next time. Goodbye and see you in the next episode.